What's the weirdest commandment? <clears throat> Don't make graven images. Remember the Sabbath. Avoid house envy. I'd like to propose that it's the one Jesus gives his disciples in this week's gospel reading. This is my commandment, he tells them shortly after, or shortly before he's arrested and crucified, that you love one another as I have loved you. Now, why do I call this commandment weird? Well, think about it. Can we be ordered to love? Does love obey decrees? My guess is most of us would say no. Shaped as we are by Hollywood or Jane Austen novels or romantic poetry, we usually think of love as spontaneous and free flow. We fall in love. Love is blind. It happens at first sight. It breaks our hearts and its course never runs smooth. Even if we put our culture's hokey cliches aside, we know that authentic love can't be manipulated, manipulated, simulated, or rushed without ser suffering serious distortion. Those of us who have kids understand full well that commanding them to love each other never works. The most we can do is insist that our children behave as if they love each other. Share your toys. Say you're sorry. Don't hit. Use kind words. But these actions, often performed with gritted teeth and rolling eyes, aren't the same as what Jesus is talking about in John's Gospel. Jesus doesn't say, act as if you love. He doesn't give his disciples, or us, the easy out of doing nice things with clenched hearts. Nor would I want him to. Nothing feels as hollow as a loving act performed mechanically. Moreover, I doubt that the people who flocked to Jesus would have done so if they sensed that his compassion was thin or forced. He says, love as I have loved you, as in for real, as in the whole bona fide package, authentic feeling, honest engagement, generous action. Honestly, doesn't it sound like he's asking for the impossible? Maybe he is. G.K. Chesterton once wrote, that the Christian ideal has not been tried and found wanting, it has been found difficult and left untried. Imagine what would happen to us, to the church, to the world, if we took this commandment of Jesus' seriously. What could Christendom look like if we obeyed orders and cultivated impossible love? I ask these questions fearfully because I know we don't know how to answer them. I mean, we know fairly well how to do things. We know how to make care packages for the homeless or bring dessert to the church potluck or send checks to our favorite charities. But do we know how to love as Jesus loved? To feel a depth of compassion that's gut-punching. To experience a hunger for justice so fierce and so urgent that we arrange our lives in order to pursue it to empathize until our hearts break. <clears throat> Do we want to? Most of the time, if we are honest, we don't. We want to be safe. We want to keep our circle small and manageable. And we want to choose the people we love based on our own affinities and preferences, not on Jesus' all-inclusive commandment. Charitable actions are easy, but cultivating our hearts preparing and pruning it to love, becoming vulnerable in authentic ways to the world's pain, those things are hard, hard and costly. So what can we do? Where must we begin? Jesus offers a single, straightforward answer. Abide in my love. Following on the heels of last week's lectionary, Jesus extends the metaphor of the vine and branches and calls us once again to abide rest, to cling, to make ourselves at home, not simply in him, but in his love. Our problem is that we often treat Jesus as a role model, and then despair when we can't live up to his high standards. But abiding in something is not the same as emulating it. In the vine and branches metaphor, Jesus' love is not our example, it's our source. It's where our love originates and deepens where it replenishes itself. 
In other words, if we don't abide, we can't love. Jesus' commandment to us is not that we wear ourselves out trying to conjure love from our own easily depleted resources. Rather, it's that if we abide in the holy place where human love becomes possible, that we make our home in Jesus' love, the most abundant and inexhaustible love in existence. As is so often the case in our lives as Christians, Jesus' commandment leads us straight to paradise. We are called to action, the arrest, called to become love as we abide in love. The commandment, or better yet, the invitation, is to drink our fill of the source, which is Christ, spill over to bless the world, and then return to the source for a fresh infill. This is our movement, our rhythm, our dance, over and over again. This is where we begin and in and begin again. Love one another as I have loved you. Abide in my love. These are finally not two separate actions. They are one and the same. One impossible commandment to save the world. Amen. Uh, an accent this week. The next week is the second Sunday Life Pantry, so bring your donations in. Uh, this week we are collecting for the United Bank offering. Uh, so if you want to either use the envelopes in, the, in your pews or the envelopes on the table, and you can make checks payable to St. John's, but in the memo line put UTO. Uh, we'll do a small prayer for those donations uh, at the offering. Any other announcements? Yes. Just a few. Um, the Lions of Heritage Festival will be coming up in June. We always have our procession stand out front selling hot dogs and drinks. And this year is June 29th. Um, it's the last Saturday of the month. The, the parade starts at 6. We usually gather around three or four. Um, just put that out there. And uh, it's raining an awful lot. The cheese and grass is growing a lot. So bakers are going to get it this week. But if you've got some time coming up, I mean, it's just, we've done all summer long. So. Awesome. Yes. <clears throat> um, six years ago, somebody will remember that my daughter had breast cancer. And um, she went through a lot of treatment. It was very aggressive. And been ready for six years. She left her pantry crown. She was in her lungs. And she stopped her treatments to that. congregation surrounding our beloved member Brian and her daughter Becky. We ask that you send your Holy Spirit upon her. Help to persevere, help her to persevere in her treatments. Help the doctors and nurses with their wisdom and knowledge to know how to treat this cancer. We ask whatever happens is in your name, but we ask that Brittany recovers and she lives a long and happy life. Christ in Any birthdays or anniversaries? I was trying to find a transition. It wasn't a good one. <laughs> All righty. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offering and to his quote. 